fill your thirst beside the river. Wash the journey from your hands. Feel the comfort flow inside you. Come this far, you understand. Hi, welcome to Healing Outside the Box. I'm Rosemary Lachance, an energy healer and a spiritual teacher. And I'm Dina Scunjo, a student of spirituality. Tonight we are continuing our Life Explained series, which will give you food for thought information about spirituality based on the teachings of Hans Wilhelm from his series. We will play one or two different DVDs and then have dialogue about it. We encourage you to call or email us or to write NHTV with your questions and we'll answer them on the show or privately if you prefer. This is not a religious show and no matter what religion or belief you follow, the information we give you will only enhance your beliefs. We try not to convince you of anything. This series is recorded and will be shown in your area on your local public service cable network. Please contact them for dates and times. If you have a group that you think would be interested in what we have to offer, we are available to come to your group and teach from this series. We will give you our contact information at the end of the show. Please visit Rosemary's or Han's website where you'll find a wealth of information about the show and about the series, the Life Explained series. We are also on Facebook under Healing Outside the Box. And please like our page to receive all the information that we post there. We are working on getting a YouTube uh, up for the shows to be seen on YouTube because I've had a lot of requests for people who are looking uh, to see the shows that aren't in their area. So we're working on that, and we're also working on a Twitter page. So uh, enjoy the show. And we have with us tonight our wonderful Hans Wilhelm. Welcome, Hans. Thank you for nice you inviting you again. me again. <laughs> Delighted to be oh, here. Oh, we'd love to have you here. With over 42 million books in print, Hans Wilhelm is one of America's foremost authors, illustrators of children's books. Many of his 200 books have been translated into 30 languages and have become successful animated television series. They are enjoyed by children all over the world. His books have won numerous international awards and prizes. As a noted speaker, Hans has been inspiring audiences around the world with his spiritual and life-affirming concepts that he shares in many of his books. He is also the creator of the Life Explained series of short videos based on the spiritual laws of the universe, which can also be found on YouTube, and they are all free. Okay. Tonight, this is our show number 171, episode 16 from Hans's Life Explained series. And we're, our first show we're going to show is called Spirit Possession. And the second, if we have time, is going to call, be called, is called, I'm sorry, is called How to Bless. And so, without further ado, as soon as the control room loads it up, we will play the first DVD. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. And in this video in the Life Explained series, I'm going to talk about earthbound spirits, also called lost souls, who can possess human beings and can make their lives miserable. I've talked about them already in my video on death and dying part two, but today I'm going to go into this subject a little bit deeper. And if you have never heard about this, you are going to hear some very interesting information. Spirit possession is as old as mankind. In all cultures, we find descriptions and stories of spirit possessions, and most famously the many references in the Bible of Jesus helping people by driving out unclean spirits. I think there are over two dozen references. Who are these possessive souls and why are they so dangerous? The majority of them are people who have died a physical death and cannot understand or accept that they have died a physical death and that they are now in a spiritual body. Death is a very simple transition from the physical world into the spiritual world. It's just like going from one room into another room or traveling from one country to another country. And when we die, we will continue living, but not in the physical body, but in the spiritual body. And this has nothing to do with religious beliefs. This is how Mother Nature has been operating for millions of years. However, there are people who are totally convinced that when they die, there is this total extinction. There is no such thing like afterlife. And when these people die, they simply cannot accept the fact that they have died a physical death and that they are still alive. 
it doesn't fit their belief system. And the same applies to very orthodox or religious dogmatic belief uh, who cannot accept the reality of death. You see, we perceive our reality according to our beliefs. These souls with these strong beliefs are totally confused when they die and we call them lost souls. And they are not open to any teachings or any guidance by light beings who are usually there to welcome them. Let me illustrate this with a typical example. Let's say we have here a young man who likes to drink and party. He, being young and thinking himself as indestructible, of course, does not think about death or even beliefs in life after death. Young people usually don't do that. Now he has taken a few drinks after work and on his way home he boom crashes his car. He dies instantly and his soul is projected out of his body. He now has a spiritual body that feels as real to him as his old physical body. His mental and emotional faculties are also very much unchanged. And as he does not believe that life exists after the physical death, he thinks he is just lucky to have survived the crash. At the moment of his physical death, light beings from the spiritual world as well as maybe some loved ones who have died before arrive to greet and guide him to the spiritual worlds. But even if he sees them, he will ignore them or run away from them because they do not fit into his belief system. He may think they are just ghosts. But the car crash may have given him a little shock and his first thought is, I need another drink. This thought alone is enough to bring him to the nearest bar or drinking spot. Initially he will be surprised or, and maybe even angry that everybody seems to ignore him because he is invisible to them. But he soon figures out that he can satisfy his alcohol addiction via another human with similar weakness or addiction, meaning a similar soul vibration. This is in complete accordance with the law like attracts like. And here we have such a person sitting at the bar. This earthbound soul now lurches onto his guest and enters his aura and his body and then enjoys his drink through him. He now has become a possessing soul. Writers have romanticized such souls as vampires, but there is nothing romantic about vampires. Uh, quite contrary, they are dangerous and often malicious. And from now on, this lost soul will possess, influence and control this human being via thoughts. This lost soul will now keep projecting thoughts and desires of drinking, eating or drugs or watching more porn or whatever it is that turns the possessing soul on. And the human being is convinced that these are his own thoughts, but they are not. They are from the possessing soul. And here is another devastating fact. It is rare for a person to be influenced or possessed by only one lost soul. Other lost souls who share the addiction will attach themselves to and very soon there are many more. Like bunches of grapes are they hanging on this one mortal being and follow him around wherever he goes and influence him like a puppet. They are like sponges draining the energy of their host. Spirits don't just enter because of their addiction, but also sometimes for revenge and they can even drive their victim to suicide and in some cases to murder. But there has to be some kind of corresponding emotional pattern in the host to make that happen. Besides bars or places of addictions, another place where souls can easily enter another human body is a hospital. Here again, we are many souls that have recently died but are not willing to accept their new situation. They are roaming around the hospital and find another patient or a visitor with similar vibration and slip into their aura and body where they now continue living through them. Talking about hospitals, another danger of spirit transplants happens during organ transplants. I have made a special short video about that topic. These lost spirits are also known to enter babies or small children. And in such cases it is the similar vibrating emotional imbalance of one of the parents of the child or baby that attracts such a vagabonding soul. 
and besides hospitals, graveyards, funeral homes, prisons and mental institutions, there is one other easy entry for such souls. And that are people who are consciously inviting spirits to speak or express themselves through them. And I'm speaking of seances, Ouija boards, planchettes, automatic writings, channelings and so on. All these activities invite souls, but there is no guarantee that only good or highly evolved souls will be attracted. No, lost souls and even devious souls love these invitations too and are happy to move in and stay with anybody who invites them. Now let us look at some symptoms or effects that may indicate the possibility of a possessive spirit. It is very often a sudden change of character or well-being or an erratic and impulsive behavior like extreme tiredness, exhaustion and depression. Of course, they can have many causes, but very often possessing spirits are draining the energy of the hosts. Remember, they are the classic vampires. Sudden severe mental problems. These lost spirits are master in manipulating and influencing the mind of their host. Think of cases of schizophrenia or the violent anger outbursts in mental homes or prisons. Drug and alcohol addictions. These are some of the most devastating symptoms of spirit possession. This also can include smoking addictions. Weight and obesity problems. These spirits bring their craving with them and make sure that any attempts to diet will be doomed. Relationship problems. No wonder because couples are suddenly having a menage a trois without their knowledge or consent and this causes problems. Sexual problems. Sexual confusion and addictions can be a result of possessing spirits. If a male spirit enters a woman or the other way around, we are having some major problems, not only in the bedroom. In some cases it can lead to homosexuality, but very often transvestites or transgenders can be caused by a powerful possessing spirit of the opposite sex. Let me be clear, not for one moment do I wish to imply that these conditions are always caused by possessive spirits. Far from it. But in her book, The Unquiet Dead, Dr. Edith Fiore claims that 70% of her patients actually had a possessing spirit. Anybody who is living in a vibratory similar world of thoughts, feelings, emotions and desires as these possessing spirits can become their victim. And one way of getting rid of them is to love and honor oneself and work oneself through all the addictions and the emotional injuries. But for many it is too late to have been a puppet of these invaders for a long time. There are other techniques for them to free and dislodge these possessing spirits. And for that I would like to refer to the many books written by medical doctors and experts in this field. For instance the book The Unquiet Dead by Dr. Edith Fiore gives clear instructions of how to dislodge or depossess a spirit. The same can be found in other important books written by medical doctors on this subject and here are some of them. Freeing Captives by Dr. Louise Island Frey, MD. Healing Lost Souls by Dr. William Baldwin. Entity Possessions by Dr. Samuel Sagan, MD. And the all-time classic 30 Years Among the Dead by Dr. Carl Wickland, MD. And I also like to mention the book Astral Horror, written by Gabriele. All these books confirm that spirit possession is a spiritual phenomenon which is fully backed by medical research and reports. And therefore I recommend these books to anybody who wants to know more about it. If you know anybody who may benefit from knowing about this video, please share it with them. It has been an honor and pleasure to be with you again. Thank you. Well, that was very, very interesting. Very interesting. I had a few questions I wanted to ask you myself, and I know Dina has a bunch of questions. I want to start with what an easy question. Um, when we get out, when we go out of our body, do we look like we looked in the body? Do we look that same way to ourselves? Are you talking in the moment of death? Yeah, after we leave our body for death, do we look Most like ourselves, but only in a, like a fine? Well, first of all, you become like. You, I have a certain kind of gravity, a, a soul gravity. Basically, all your, your action, your deeds or whatever it is, is reflected in your aura. That is your aura. That is your being. You will then acquire a sort of kind of identity, which usually it's very much the same like you were here on Earth, mm -hmm. if that is possible. But many people who have sort of really led a very destructive life will uh -huh. not be able to look the same way. 
But some people even may look a lot better because uh, their, their, their soul is, has a much higher gravity. So I think the way how we look on the other side has a lot to do with how we have lived in uh, this life. Very good. Okay. All right. So not everybody returns to that 23-year-old, loof, youthful girl. No, that I don't think so. It depends. It all depends. You see, this is the thing. There is no rule as that everything is so individual. Every death experience is a very individual experience. And anybody who says that this has to be this way and only that way, I think they don't understand. The mm. more I learn about it, the more I realize the, all the a large varieties and all these kinds of instances. Mm. And uh, yes, if, if you have eventually reached a certain point where you are uh, sort of on the progression of purification, you will usually acquire something, an identity of a 23-year-old, really young, vibrant and healthy. But this is depending on how your life has, to, has been on this earth. If you have been a robber and a criminal and things like this, chances are you won't immediately be able to acquire such an appearance. Oh, okay. I was thinking when I was watching this, um, I think that Ghost, the movie Ghost, mm -hmm. was a really good example, Very don't you good think? Movie. Yeah. Excellent movie. Excellent movie. Excellent. Showed everything, yeah. I think everything is in there. It yeah. really, really shows. And it's so. an inter a very entertaining one. <laughs> yes, it was entertaining. And yeah. I would say, I would recommend, if, if you haven't already seen yeah. it, to rent the movie Ghost. Um, okay. Well, you go ahead. I have a few. We'll go back and forth. Those little black. Uh, Spirits that came up out of the ground. Yeah, oh, we're, we're making all that noise, scary. grabbing them down. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. That that book you mentioned, Astral Horror by Gabrielle. Um, horror makes me think, oh, something scary is going to happen if you don't, you know. Uh, oh, the word. Yeah. Well, it it you, can well, be a bit scary, yeah, but it is also a very dangerous situation. I mean, we are all constantly bombarded by influences, of negative influences, mm. uh, as well as positive influences. We are continuously influenced by the spiritual world. They are the positive energies, and we have to emphasize them. They are there with us, our guardian spirit, and whoever we believe in our kind of religious belief system, they are there, and there are these entities who really are helpful here, try to protect us. They cannot manipulate us, but they can warn us and give us choices, but they cannot say, don't do this or whatever it is. They will just sort of be more a guiding kind of spirit. They definitely are here 24 hours all so the you, time. You could potentially get lost. Um, even even if you haven't done all that crazy stuff, you, you could potentially get lost if a, a, another possessing spirit kind of clouds your way. Well, the, what it usually happens is we all have got um, what's uh, called as sort of weaknesses or kind of addiction or little uh, hang-ups or also emotionally unhealed en energies in mm -hmm. our life and our past. And they are reflected in our aura. Our aura is kind of like a cocoon around us, reflecting always on what we, who we are, what we believe and how we act and so on, and what we think and what we feel. And there are certain spots and very areas which are weak. And these are those weak in possibilities where another entity can send in initially thoughts, not themselves, as I've seen in the video here, but them, uh, they, they uh, inject thoughts. Like, for instance, oh, you want to have another drink, for instance, or whatever it is, or you feel like it's, and you think it's your own drink, but it is an ejection. And then you go to the bar, and you have one drink, or says, let's have another one, go to a second one. He is still not possessed you, sitting outside of you, but constantly influencing you all the time, sending up whatever you, wherever your weakness is, whatever it is, what he or she likes as well, what she wants. She wants that drink, that obsess, that soul, that lost soul. But she can't have it without a physical body. And for that, they need somebody, she needs a physical body. So she prepares you or anybody else slowly to become ready for that. So continuously injecting. We can compare it very much like a computer virus. They send in the virus into our computer and very harmlessly initially, and then slowly it grows and grows. And initially, it drains our computer, it crashes our computer, drains our money deposit or whatever it is, it does all the damage. And this is the same way how the negative spiritual entities really continuously influence all of us. Nobody is really accepted and is excluded from this. And we are continuously bombarded by this because there's an enormous multitude of, of uh, earthbound lost souls. And of course, in places, as I mentioned in the video, they are congregate at certain areas particularly, like bars and whatever it is and addictions and whatever it is, etc. So there are a lot. But we can protect ourselves through prayers, through light around us, focus ourselves and not give in always. 
So when you say that they bunch up on you like uh, like grapes, like it can be more than one. Oh yeah. Is is each one like pushing you to have one more? I mean, like you could potentially have ten drinks uh, because they're all wanting one. <laughs> they all they all share they all share the drinks together with you. I just I didn't even know it. Somebody just mentioned there's actually a quote in, in Matthew that uh, says that the unclean spirits leave you and when they come back and they see that your body or the house is empty, they come back with seven more spirits and occupy you. So, I mean, the Bible is very specific about these uh, unclean spirits or what oh. we call the lost souls. It gives a lot of stuff about it. I think there are over 40 quotes and 20 of them where Jesus heals people just uh, uh, unclean uh, Yeah, unclean the spirits. 20 came out, yeah. Yeah, 20? so yeah, they are there. Out of one person? No, 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 20 quotes came uh, yeah, about but he, Jesus. He, I don't know what he, how many he did on one. Yeah, he did one of them that had, like, I don't know how many. It was yeah. a large number. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. They, are not, they don't have the volume like we have, the physical volume. So you can have, really, 20 just hanging around with you. But they, they just sort of fold into each other and just occupy. I'm not, <laughs> you won't have <laughs> But the potential is there. We have to be careful of that. So the See, 20 cupcakes I ate wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one way of looking at it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that mine. <laughs> it's not that you often mention, you see. This is the thing. It, it was well known for thousands of wow. years. And, and, uh, and, and every culture, we deal with it. And we do it, of course. I showed some pictures of voodoos and whatever, it is, et cetera. We, we wow. do accept it in other areas, but in our so-called highly evolved societies, we say, oh, no, this can't no, be. It can't be, no. But no, it is very much. I just heard yesterday, I don't know whether you saw 60 Minutes, there was a very no. sad report about the heroin addiction in America, suburbia America, mm. and they showed Ohio, where virtually it's full. Every house you can have at home delivered yeah. heroin. And it's not only students, it, it's mostly students. <laughs> And, and, and uh, college kids, and uh, who usually often start off with anti, um, anti pain. Yeah, purposes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the next step to heroin. And they go sometimes to six high, seven, um, uh, what's the word, uh, helping themselves about uh, re recoveries, recoveries uh -huh. kind of programs. Oh, okay. Um, and they always fall back. And very often in the end, they overdose and die. So why is it that all these, uh, these recovery programs don't help? Because the soul has found a weak person. The, the, a lost soul has found a weak person and can continuously influence them very quickly and says, come, let's have one more, let's have one more, let's have one more. And if you're young, you, of course, you believe you'll never die and life is forever. Mm. And uh, you are open for that. But it's very, very sad to see the prevalence of that that particular, there's only one of many drugs, but we heroin in that. suburban America, well, because that's the middle class, the white middle class, but that's where the money is. And with young people, it is just amazing. Well, you have had your cases, I oh, guess. Oh, in, in fact, in, they're actually giving police officers Narcan now to yes. carry on the, on the police trucks right. because very often they get there before we do, and sometimes minutes will count when someone's not breathing because they go into respiratory arrest if they have enough heroin or they, you know, they'll crush up Percocet and they'll they'll take that too, and it acts just like heroin. They give now not only to police, according to the 60 minutes, they give it now to parents. Oh, they're giving it to parents. Yeah, that was coming. I don't know if that's here in it's Connecticut. So sad, Connecticut yeah, lags yeah. with that stuff. Right. But um, anyway, yeah. it's just one of the uh, of the hor horrors. Which, yeah, it's which sad. When I've... you mentioned the word horrors, astral horrors. Thing, if you're facing that in your family, your young children, I, mm. that for me would be oh, a real yeah, horror. And it yeah. is not just something far away and somewhere else. It's right here in America, right here in suburbia, and it's right here in families we know. Most of them are very young, too. Yeah, this is the thing, very young. Um, when I was going to ask, uh, which that question is further down, but since we're at that, um, um, where's my contract one? With these spirits, when they come in and they're doing that, are they messing with the contracts you've set up before you come back? Oh, they back? don't care about your contracts. No, they're, they're only interested in themselves. You must see them really like the mafia. The mafia comes in and uses you. You, may, you think maybe you work for the mafia. The moment you are no longer useful, they drop you. They don't care about you. They only use you for as long as possible, and then they move somewhere else. So they don't care about any you know, contracts or whatever you are, or you're supposed to do in this life or want to do, or your love relationships or whatever it is. They just want to have that, that addiction, that kind of substance. 
which they need through their body. This is one way. Of course, these are the lost souls. Of course, we have another total, uh, different kind of group of souls, which are the demons, which we call, which is a much, much more serious subject. I have not made a video on that one. But that is really, well, that's where we come into exorcism. That's really where the church is preaching exorcism. This is really very dangerous stuff. But they are mostly interested in groups of people. They are the ones who instigate wars and friction because this is whenever we are fearful, whenever we are hatred, whenever we have a strong negative energy, we are sending out these vibrations, these energies. And they are like, like energy and that's what they want. Uh. They want, they, they, that is, they are not so much into your drug thing or to your drinks. They want your negativity. And the negativity is an energy form which that keeps them alive. Oh. On the other side, it's sort of life, a life force. Oh. It's a negative life force which keeps them alive, and it keeps them alive on the other side for a very specific reason. Because if they don't have enough life force, they get pulled back into the spiritual world and have to face another reincarnation and all their deeds. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And as long as they have enough life force, they don't have to face their karma. Uh. That's why they are all interested to cause as much drama, as much war, and as much destruction as possible, because all these things create and people fear. If you look at the Middle East and so on, this is all manipulated by negative forces. So the negativity comes up and brings up all this energy. We call them louche energy. And they are these life form energies which these demon type of entities need to live. So, so basically they get to stay who they are even after they've died, they don't, there's no growth, there's no nothing. No, nothing on the contrary. They, they does, burn themselves more and more. Does every soul have, a, have guardian angels? Most certainly. Do they, do they hang around at all to try to influence on these this souls? negativity? Yes, to, to but they don't want to. That's, they also have their guardian spirits, but they're far away. See, these are very nasty negative energies. When you're so low, you're really sparkling all evil or whatever it is. And the guardian spirit doesn't want to be affected, but it will be there and says, if you're ready, come, I will guide you home. But it takes a long time, uh. totally exhausted, like finally, like an, uh, alcohol, uh, uh, like an alcoholic, who eventually has to really hit bottom, that eventually they realize that this is not good. And eventually he is open and then the guardian spirit can come closer and bring him back oh, to the spiritual so it has world. To be. But they can do that for centuries. I mean, oh. centuries of our time on this planet. Right. Well, they do have a different, virtually no time sensitivity right, as we have. Yeah. They live in a different kind of thing. For them, it's going on always. There's a wonderful book, if you ever read this. I have read it, I think, six, seven times because it's so well written. It's called uh, Wanderer in the Spirit World. I'm just going to I'm oh, just going to say, yeah. I do too. I read I gotta, it three I times. I started to read that. And every excellent. Time I just watch it I've got two copies of it. And I just go back to that book and I open it up and I get sucked into this book yeah. so strongly. And it's I exactly guess i got to read it. Yeah, I've you, been... you, you learn something new every time you, oh you read gosh. it. And I was going to mention that in that book, if you remember, yeah. there are spirits over there who are war going to war. Yeah. They get up and they fight with each other and they die. Like on the other side, they die. And then when it's all over, they get back up and they do it all over again. And they just spend the their whole time doing that. But they can't get affected by a positive event. Like God, do you, they can't. is it still a free will thing on the other side? Is it still a sure, free will yeah. spirit sure. thing? Oh, sure. yeah. I mean, even when you're off of the, out of your body. Eventually, they may get tired of it. Eventually. Yeah. But it may take a long, long time. And when they get tired, like an alcoholic anonymous, but like an alcoholic with force basically has to hit bottom before it finally says, this is enough. I had enough. But it Some. can take long. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, they will eventually. Yeah. Well, well, I've yeah. had alcoholics die on me and they've never... Well, they'll, on the other right. side, yeah. they'll do it or they'll yeah. do it here. Yeah. But just to clarify, the name of the book is A Wanderer in the Spirit Lands. It's Spirit Lands, not Word? It's Spirit Lands? Or could spirit. be? I spirit. I Spirit World. Wanderer in the Spirit could be Spirit world. Lands. Could be. And I it comes it. in many... I think it's Land. Lands. And it comes in different editions because yes. it's out of, it's, uh, out free, of, out of print, but... Many publishers have taken it over, and you can buy. Yeah, order, order it on uh, from Amazon. Yeah. and order the one with the picture on the cover, of um um, oh, and like an angel holding a man, something like that. That's the best copy that I found. There was another copy that the printing was really small. Yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. Yucky. Good to know. But if you all out there look for that particular one and get a hold of me, and I'll tell you the print. I love the, it. Uh, the uh, Do you remember who wrote it? It's it was Francesco. Fr yes, Francesco, Francesco. and that yeah. was like the movie Astral City. He, he was that was he was a clairvoyant, right? And that man, the man who told the story, was something like uh, Astral City. Only I think that was England or something. 
he told the story to Frances to this medium who wrote this book. Francesco told yeah. it to the medium, yeah. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Francesco told it to the medium who that wrote the book. That was way back in the old, oh, it was a long time ago, 150 right? 150 years ago, something yeah. like this, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's so easy to read, it's just, uh, wonderful. Anyway, so this basically explains in a, in a short way that book is a very entertaining. Excellent. and, and Tells uh, how you grow, how you learn, right. how you help and he people. Was an, he Excellent. also did some crime, he, uh, he killed somebody. I think he was a young man, he killed somebody and he died. And he was not ready for that, what happened to him, because he, he, he was really... He was very privileged. I, and yeah, I don't remember that he killed somebody. I remember that he just used people. He used, used people, women. I, I think he killed he somebody men, too. He yeah. did whatever he pleased. Right. He drank. He ate. He spent money. He did. He was just talking. Really. <laughs> he didn't okay. care about anyone or anything till they met a woman who he fell in love with. Really, and then isn't he died. The it's always that one woman, isn't it? <laughs> but it's then always he, that one woman. But yeah. then he died. Shortly after that, but he was in love with her, and that's what he maybe tried to contact right. her in the beginning. And it shows the power of her who yeah, saved him, who helped to save him, and that also the power of prayers and yeah. blessings as we speak. She prayed spoke for about him. It, how that energy helped him tremendously to grow. Yeah. And this is a true story from spirit. But did mm -hmm. she? He met this woman before he died. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and but he still died unexpectedly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I have to read this. It's really good. Let's read this. Yeah, I couldn't. I, the first time I ever read it. Oh, oh. Oh, first time to get in the morning. Got to get back to that book. It was so good for we who are interested in right, yeah. in learning. Um, now, one of the questions that you said they don't they don't care about our contracts and this and that. If they interfere with our lives for a, a, quite a long period of time, is to the point where we don't get things done that we're supposed to do when we're reincarnated. That means that we're going to have to come back and do it again through not through our fault though. It's, oh. It is partly your fault because you opened yourself up to him because there was, a vi there was a similar vibration in you. They cannot do anything to you if you are not on a somewhere similar vibration than they are. If you, mind, if you must have somewhere a little, uh, if I'm talking the alcohol uh, in the instance or whatever, you must uh, like your little drinks and about maybe two or three and so on. If you don't have that, they cannot really come in or can be any other kind of vice or whatever, weakness, whatever we say. So you are already vulnerable from, from that, and it is, that is where the entry po spots are. And if you don't cut it off in uh, quite a way, if you realize you're increasing that thing, whatever it, uh, your addiction is, and you don't stop it yourself willfully, you're basically um, opening yourself more and more, even unconsciously open up to these forces. So you are responsible for that. Now, you said at towards the end, if they can enter a child through a parent who has that vibration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, if the parent attracts that soul to a child, will it, does that child inherently have those bad habits? I mean, let's use no, me for example, this, uh, because obviously yeah. I'm overweight. So let's say that, did I have that in me when I was born? Like, was, I, was part of the reason I came back was for the, because of the food and, and Mm -mm. You know, like I try to Don't be successful on a. Questions. I know, but it's not. It, Nobody can. You try to be question. successful on a diet, and then you get that voice saying, "Ah, oh, just, just a little bit." You know, and, and is that like part? Yeah. I mean, not trying to take the blame off myself, but I'm just saying, and if you're saying that a parent's negativity influences, they can come into a child. Does it change the child's no, soul? No, is where I'm I don't lost think so. at. I can I say something well, here? Please, yeah, I'm... I think that if you came here and you have the weight problem that in a, in a past life or so, you may have made fun of somebody's addiction or somebody that's heavy. I mean, that's just a friend, there's many reasons, but whatever it could be, you probably came here to work out the, you know, why you thought that, that this being fat was like uh, the person's own fault and they couldn't help overweight. it. Overweight. Yeah, overweight. Could, <laughs> and so you came here to learn all this. And of course then like he, he, you attracted those spirits too. You know what I'm saying? You I can't blame you for this. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know. I know. We know. We like to be funny here, but uh, um, you came for a reason to do that, and then so you... it was. It was basically already kind of in you, and, 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 yeah, and as it, you grew up. It... And it really, I think, uh, it's good to understand that the potential of another entity would may influence you or not influence you, but still, it's always first your own decision what you have so to do. So some people, it's a really I mean, it's a really tough oh, very hard. willpower thing to say, hey, I'm not going to do that. I'm not giving it's in. It's very, not. very, very hard, and there are many different kinds of systems. That's why I mentioned all these books at the end of mm. the video, and if anybody uh, wants to go back, I suggest to go to lifeexplained.com and watch that video again and hold, 
and uh, look at all the titles of the books and write them down and see which one appeals to you because mm. in these books are clear instructions of how you can get rid of the, the, the spirit if you think you have, might have a spirit like this. And um, uh, what's uh, the one I already mentioned uh, with Edith Fiori, she has got a clear description where you can really talk yourself, you can talk to that spirit. Don't forget, the obsessing spirit, and we're not talking about the demons, we're talking about the, uh, the lost souls, are just human beings, brothers and sisters like everybody else. And they are not necessarily evil, they are just confused and uh, don't know because, as I said in the video, when they die, they don't know really that they are dead, but they just try to, to cope their way through life and they, they do these things. So they are valuable brothers and sisters who deserve as much attention, as, as much love as any human being does. Mm. So we have to speak with them lovingly. It is here also a way of uh, helping the soul to move out of the body into the light. So in the books which I mentioned, there are instructions of how to do this, to, to really make the soul aware of where, that he or she is inhabiting another human being. There's a wonderful book of this one, The 30 Years Among the Dead by Dr. Wigland, mm. where his, the whole book is full of, of reports of, of souls that come through his wife, his wife is a medium, and they speak to them. They didn't know they were possessing somebody. Mm. None of them knew they were possessing another human being. They were just always wondering, suddenly I've got woman clothes, it doesn't make sense, but anyway, etc. So they are, they are confused, totally confused, but they are very, very much there and they want their way of life. And that's, it's not necessarily always an addiction, it can be just a personality comes through, which never came through before with a human being. So um, they need to be talked into this and understood. In the past, they also used electrotherapy very often. That helped in the past as well. That they can't handle. They don't like that. And then they leave the body. So electroshocks can help. I'm not saying this is the way where we would go today, but that it used to be here in America. Yeah, you'd long time. And the psychiatric facilities, yeah. the yeah. electrical. Electroshock, yeah. yeah. Say, they say, I read that a lot of the people that are in the mental institutions are really just possessed yeah. and not really oh, mentally ill. Much. I would say more so most than, of them yeah. by far. Right. Most of them, yeah. Mm. And uh, yeah, and I've seen some crazy outbursts from people, and I oh, wonder yeah. where they're at or how chemically imbalanced they Immediately are. Immediately put yourself into around light and so on, protect that this that they don't jump over or whatever it is. They are not without danger. Yeah. Do you think that um, they can affect the energy around you? Because like like they show in movies and things like that. I, I was telling her some ever since I started. Listening, uh, ever since I watched this video and started thinking a lot more about it, I've been having a few things that have been going on. Like, I was sitting in the ambulance one night doing my check sheet, and out of the blue, my monitor, my heart monitor went on. And I didn't touch it. I hadn't touched it all night. Just like that. Does that, things like that happen? I'm sure that could be that some I'm entities an want to get the attention, but I would not venture to uh, analyze it. Tell me the other it. thing. I was sitting uh, in the a station. All and, this happening within a couple of days. Yeah, within t within two days of each other. Uh, the the soap dispenser, which is electronic, which is sitting um, eight feet away from me. I'm sitting at the table over at the sink, and all of a sudden I, I hear the the thing the thing dispense soap as if your hand was underneath it, and I turned and looked at it, and the light was blinking like crazy. It never blinks like that, and I look back and I'm like. Okay, and then it went three more times. I look at it again, and I'm like, uh, and D, my well, brother, or my grandmother, is somebody yeah. here, what's going on? I can't hear you. I'm not that good at this yet. I put a pen on a piece of paper. I said, what do I, I don't know what to do. You know, I'm like, and, uh, and so I'm like, I hear nothing, and I, so I stop again, and it goes again one more time, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm not there where I can hear what you're saying. That happened first. And then, so I cleaned it up and it stopped. And then the next night, you clean it up, huh? I cleaned up the soap oh. uh, to see if it was just a malfunction of the right. thing. I messed with it. I don't. And then next night, the monitor turned on in the ambulance, just like well, that. If you there's a suspicion that there may be some entities wanting to get their, your attention, just close yourself into beautiful white light and pray and ask for some spiritual guides to help whoever it is in this room to further. You have no time for them. You have no time for that. Well, them. I thought maybe I could help them or... or no, you are not here to help them if they want to... Look, the spiritual side, the positive spiritual side, is on the other side, has nothing else to do than helping people who are lost. Uh, you and I, we just gamble and we think and we will, may want to do something wonderful and so on. We have no idea. Right. But the experts are on the other side. So they can easily 
help the soul if the soul is ready. So it says, look, don't influence me. You have, you have no time for other, other souls. You have to take care of yourself. You have enough good work yes. on So you. it's not like in the movies where you're like, you know, uh, go into the light, yeah, you, you can tell yeah. them go into the light, but just tell them also very clearly, look, I have no time for you. I have mm -hmm. no time for you. She's thinking if her That's brother came very, or her yeah. grandmother came. If your brother came. comes, yes, then I think he can come in the dream and let you know otherwise. Yeah. And a dream? Uh -huh. Yeah, because he's come to me in dreams many, yeah. many times. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen And he told one. me, he said, see, you thought that I was gone. I'm always around you. You just can't see me. Right. You see. And those are fine words. Yeah. And he's got his own stuff to do. Yes. He does. He never stays around long. He's well, busy. my thought was that if they're afraid, like you said in the video, if they're afraid they see the white light or the guardian angels and they run away because of their reality, mm -hmm. that maybe they'll gravitate towards somebody who is a little more open-minded with that kind of thing. And maybe there's something you can say to oh, yeah. get them back. If on you the... feel that way, that you tell them. I wasn't go, scared. I didn't go, feel. Go to the light uh, but, uh, and, and find the light and trust the light. But I don't have really time for you at the moment. Make mm -hmm. it very clear that just yeah, leave me to alone. Your, because they, they can yeah. be very attached. You see, uh, if they are lost, for okay. instance, think about the lost person. There is somebody with a letter because they sense your sensitivity. Right. And your loving way and your, how the way you are. You take care of people all, all day long, people in, the, in distress. They see that. And says, oh, she can help me too, maybe, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you're not there to help those souls. You can only bless them and send them off their way. But if you allow them to attach themselves to you, um, there, are better, there, are be, there are more skilled talents out there on the other side who uh, can do that. So that's probably what's going on there. Because I've had, I mean, there, there are times where, you know, it's just constant crap going on and aggravating things or things. It's, it's a lot of electronical yeah. things that are happening. So I'm thinking someone with a really strong electronical... Then bless the, bless the machine. Uh, Send light to them. Hmm. Then bless to the machine. Because even if you're nice, they may want to stick around you because this you're nice the and they this get a, is the thing. Yeah, they'll get affection from you them. and attention. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't help them. them. Tell them to call, talk to their guardian angels and seek them out and go to them. And, and there are like other that. things to do than hang around here. Yeah. Okay. You know, <laughs> that, makes, that makes it clearer. I get understand that lives. better now. I mean, Greenwich yeah. is a nice place, but still, heaven is better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That makes sense. That makes a lot more sense because yeah. you, you know, you think you want to... Like the old the show, The Ghost Whisperer, where you want to help Oh, she somebody. wants to help everybody cross you know, over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. But, um, and that, because that, my last question you had answered earlier about how they move in and out of their host and they move around, they they come back again. So that and was can my, come back, yeah. Yeah. But in many cases, they just, they just stay there, particularly the lost ones. The lost souls, they're just happy to have another comfortable body to live in and extend their life. It is more the demons who are just viciously looking for, oh, that's the one I can get next to, get this one and that one. They can jump in and out very quickly. But the lost souls are usually staying with the soul person until one way or the other we, we part. Are the demons the ones who are more likely to influence murder or suicide? Oh, yeah, suicide they have the, anything, like anything extremely negative. Really oh, bad, yeah. Yeah. Extremely very, negative. very, very bad. That's Even what, to people who run these world, run the different countries and so forth. Well, there's a lot that to make yeah. wars. Yeah. And, and, and people who have the greed, you know, have millions and trillions of dollars. And how much money do you need that they keep for themselves? The most famous story, of course, is Dr. Faust for Goethe. You remember there is this, uh, this old classic German story, which actually came from England, I think, from Marlowe. But uh, this is all sort of a senior citizen doctor and um, lecturer and so on. He's sort of getting older and suddenly falls in love with this way underage little girl he sees and says, need to have her. So the devil comes and says, I give it to you. I give you also Prozac or whatever you need. What is the other one? Um, Cialis. Cialis, yeah. yes. Oh, you mean the vi uh, Viagra. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so he says, but you have to sell your soul to me. Oh, he says, all right. And he's so, so eager to Be get with laid this with this yeah. young girl. So he just signs his, <laughs> his soul away in blood and just goes over it and commits. And the poor girl, of course, was pregnant and commits suicide over all the kind of drama story. Wow. But it is uh, the most famous German story. But by Goethe, and it's just a typical classical story of where we sell ourselves to the devil mm. by getting what we want in this life and uh, extreme wealth, mm -hmm. fame, or whatever it is, ruling and, countries, and, and, and ruling music, people, we have starting it, and wars, so on. Yes, everything. and you you get the energy; they give you that energy, but in return, later on, you have to become their 
their follower or whatever it is, yeah. they're, they're, they're slave. Right. So really and when you don't hear any way out of it, once you do that, is there any way out of it? Of course, there's always a way out. Yeah. You're not totally lost there, but it needs a, the more you get drawn into it, the more strength you need to get out of it. Yeah. That's where the problem is. That's why try to stay, uh, <laughs> keep afloat <laughs> and don't get into too deep anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, keep your life sort of in a balanced way. The balance, the golden middle path is always the it's ideal way. It's tough to balance out. That's a question I was going to ask you at the end, but I want to say something else too. Even these demons are brothers and sisters, right? And even the so-called devil, which there isn't any devil, he's just a very, very sunk very low, was once a very high angel mm -hmm. who sunk very low. Mm -hmm. So everybody's going back home one day. We're yes. all going back. But he is just so... How can, how can we say it? So, what's the word? Caught up in his own, um, his own ego, and That's so true. forth. And he's he the has, one who influenced Jesus, right? The forty days, forty. That's the one. Yeah, the one. About. Yeah, when, when he went out into the desert and said, "I'll give you anything you want. Just follow me." Remember that one? Yeah, in the, yeah. In the movie. The yeah. Line, yeah. And then he has these people who work for him in spirit, that they call little devils or or the demons. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, he they influenced the people that are like in high positions in this world. Mm -hmm. There's a lot about the demons and, yeah. and the devils in, in, the, in the Bible about that too. But it's not very uh, politically correct to speak about of, uh, lost souls and demons and so on. So it's really like old fairy tale stuff, but yeah. it isn't. People are thinking that, yeah, oh, well, they're you crazy. See, when you I know? saw yesterday the 60 minute thing on the heroin in, in suburbia of America, I says, oh my God, why don't people see that? What's going on here? that these young kid children are all influenced by these entities continuously and nobody tells them they say all right it's all because they use the, some of these painkillers and so on but the painkillers was the first start to get there to get there and of course the the, the, the medical industry is also very interested to sell more of these mm. painkillers and so on mm -hmm. they have these extreme sports like football where they injure themselves tremendously and then they need these painkillers I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's madness. Yeah. Any form of competitive sport, if we really think about it, yes. is a sickness. Mm -hmm. It's a tremendous sickness. It makes no sense. No. But we, we enjoy that and we get high. And the energies in a stadium, yes, even if they are sort of positive, but they're also fighter energy. This is a lot of negative energy in there, which looks good for us. Yeah, when we scream, they win and so on. But there's always the other one who lose. Etc. So there is always this emotion, emotion, emotion. This is all energy, all energy, which the spirits, these rather lost spirits, love. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we deliver it gladly and we think we are high or wonderful by being one of these fans and so on. I'm not saying it's not fun to have sport, but sport does not need to be competitive. Right. You're right. That's going to be a tough one to pass. <laughs> I know America yeah. is the wrong place for that. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably but lose my, my American citizenship with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would be very hard, very, very, very hard. We love our <laughs> football. People that <laughs> base it's not so hard. <clears throat> it, 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 it's good. There, there are a lot of young uh, children understanding that much more. For instance, all the children who grew up in Rudolf Steiner schools, the Waldorf schools around the world, there are millions of them. They don't do these competitive sports. They know exactly how de destructive that is. And they've got a very different attitude. So children and parents all over the world are waking up that this is not a very healthy thing. If you may think you are getting some high energies, highs about it, and you are also building up a tremendous ego in these things and whatever it is. But if you really look at it, this, this is not really good. This is not a teamwork. It's very different than fighting two teams together. Is there a, a good thing, something to read about that, about how that's changing and, and how the, those schools are not oh, introducing a book on that. sports? Mm -hmm. The Rudolf Steiner schools or the Waldorf school are all over the... Steiner school? Uh, uh, Rudolf Steiner? Rudolf Steiner or Rudolf the Steiner. Waldorf school, Waldorf schools here in America. There are a Waldorf, count, Waldorf schools. There are Waldorf countless schools. everywhere. Every community basically has them by now. You can read and about them. Uh, they are just sort of a very different uh, way of bringing it's up children. It's all private schools. This is a private school. Yeah. It's a, in, in Germany, it's the most popular private school. You have to register the kid at birth to get into the wow. one of those. And uh, yeah, it's a, and isn't that a shame, though? Huh? Yeah. It's only for the privileged. <laughs> it's a, yeah. well, it's a, it's just for the privileged. Yeah. yeah. But for now. It has always been in a way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of, mm. Yeah, uh, it has. So, um, how can we like? All right, like. You see, so you're talking about this, this show you saw and, the, and the, the young people with the heroin and all that. But they had 
when they came into this world, they had a tendency towards an addiction, or else they couldn't, they wouldn't have started in the first place, right? So, I mean, they weren't like like we told talked to you about the the overweight thing. You have a tendency towards it, so or you can't be affected, right? That's what you had said before. They can't take someone who doesn't have that kind of uh, an addictive personality and influence them, right? They have to be able to inject thoughts mm -hmm. of wanting something that they want. So a young person, of course, is very impressionable. And a young person is always bored wherever they are. This is, uh, this is a natural thing. They, don't, they, they are just totally bored and they, they do the, whatever. If there's nothing in those, sub and they should in Ohio, suburbia is boring and so on. And I understand that. So they, use, they try to find highs. And these highs can be various different highs. And this is, of course, it allows this energy to come in. I'm not saying that necessarily you are born with that, that a particular weakness, uh, addiction or desire for addiction, but I think there are periods in your life, and particularly when you are young, where these things can come on very e easily. Mm -hmm. And I'm always saying how blessed I was that when I grew up, there were no drugs. They came, I think, five years later. Mm -hmm. But I was sort of, a, that was a one temptation I was never, <laughs> never, was never offered to me, but I fully understand because I hated my, my teenage years, my, my adolescent years. I think I would have gone full blast with it if I later look back and so on because I was very unhappy until 18 years when I learned TM. But until that age group, I think we are very easily influential by everything. When I think bad things that are happening like abuse or, or things like that breaks a, a person down to the point where those interjections can have a positive not a positive, but, but can get through to, to a, a young person. You mean having person. an abusive uh, family? Right, where well, yeah, you're it's... broken down and you're entertaining all other thoughts. I mean, you know, I'm sure every kid out there is exposed to oh. marijuana or some kind of drugs, right. alcohol and food, and whichever way you gravitate is... And it's you know. regarded as cool amongst your mm. mates, your playmates or your, your peers and so on. It's cool and everybody else does it, so it must be fine. Mm. It's very, very difficult. Oh, yeah. So how do you think that people, young people and, all, and people of all ages can protect themselves from having these entities influencing them? Well, the one thing I believe is, first of all, know about it. Right. That's number, step number one. And then you have a choice because they don't know about it and they sort of... Oh, they don't believe although it, Although yeah. they see all kinds of videos and, and movies that have the spirit or whatever it is, but they say this all make-believe. It's not true. But spirit obsession is true. Possession is, is, is true, and it, it, it's, it's very real. But who knows that of the young people? Even the so-called Christians who go to church all the time, they don't believe in that no. necessarily. But the so. thing is, to, to help protect is to learn something about spirituality, learn about God, learn about... All these things that we're trying to talk about on the show that, that do exist, right? And, and then learn how to protect yourself. Honor yourself to, yeah, that you don't need that. Yeah, keep the white light around yourself yeah. and so forth. Belie you know, know that it's real and it can happen and take the steps to protect yourself, which would be what I just said about learning spirituality. Do you have anything to add to that? Reading those books that he was talking yeah. about. Yeah, to study that if that is what you want. But uh, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to think as a kid, I don't want to, to necessarily learn what my parents tell me to read. So mm -hmm. I'm just putting myself yeah, into right. a kid's ear that says, well, if you would come to me and say, you have to learn about spirituality, I would run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, it's Because true. when you are young, you are very much hedonistic. You are totally interested in your own pleasure and whatever it is. Mm. And only later on when you get older and you say, suddenly see people actually dying and moving on and says, wow, 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 and you're coming closer, closer to your own abyss. Then suddenly people will wake up. And the young person to tell them you have to learn about spirituality would be nice if they could, are open for it, but I don't blame them being hedonistic and self-centered like hell. Well, all right, well, even if you're, if you're not younger, you're a little older, you're in your 20s or your 30s, you can start then. I mean, that's when, you know, you wake up. When you're ready. Yeah, yeah. when you wake up to... Not necessarily this. you wake Not up. necessarily, no. No, <laughs> no, but I mean, what people do, whenever they're like, they're, they're, they must be sitting out and they're saying to themselves when they're listening to this, how can I not let this happen to me? How can I uh, protect myself from this kind of thing? I mean, do I have any say in it? Do I, you know, that's... Well, I think it's what he was question. saying was you have to honor yourself and, you know, if you... Uh, t for me, my thought is, well, if I have a craving and I want to go for something... I need to honor myself and say, hey, that's not going to be good for me in the long run. That's what I'm thinking, you know. 
and say, you know, if there's a spirit hanging around, and you know, go into the light, get away. <laughs> yeah, you don't you want know. to use the spirit as somebody as an escape code. No, 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 no. But you want to, you want to take care of yourself, and the only way to take care of yourself is to think. I think, I think eventually, if you talk yourself out of something, eventually maybe they'll just move on to the next person that they can more easily if influence. If they after a while see that they're not getting through you what they want, there's a great chance that they can move on, yeah. There are several uh, websites on it as well on the internet, and one of them, I think, what is it called? Uh, soul Healing Therapy, it's called. I don't know uh, Patrick uh, Rodriguez who runs it. I've spoke with him over the phone. But he is dealing with this kind of, uh, with people who feel that they are possessed with souls uh, over the phone as a form of therapy. And what he has, he has got a wonderful video, much better than what I did. Very short 10 minutes video uh, from his perspective of, because he has worked with it all his life. And there, once again, it is shown how, this, how the obsession, uh, possession takes place mm. and uh, how we can get, uh, he possess that soul. And uh, anybody who is interested can do that. And as I said, rather go back to the video and look also the books and read the books, make yourself familiar with it. And I think that would be a great help to to move on, to go Soul further. Soul healing therapy. So, Soul yeah, healing therapy. Well, as I said, I'm not recommending it as a particular one, no. but it is something no, which sure I came across out, in yeah. my research, and I was rather impressed by the by what he had to offer. And and that's just only one way to. People uh, mm -hmm. talk like on Facebook, uh, you know, I use that social medium to try to get this, this spiritual things across and for animal protection and so forth. And they always say, well, how can I change things? How can we do, won't this ever end? What can we do? And I say, there's a wealth of information out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, if your religion isn't giving you the answers you need to know, go out there and get the books and read and get mm -hmm. on the internet and search and everything else. You can find, if you really want to know, you can find it. Yeah. You yeah. know? This One is of the the beauty of today's internet that you yeah. can find it, but you can also the find a lot of trash age. there. Yeah, you the, can find a lot of trash, right? The mm. internet is yeah. double sword, uh, double edged sword. And your angels are always there to help you, your guardian angels. Right. And you can always ask them, lead me to the right place. Right. You know, Very you got true. to. I think that faith and belief is the most important thing that you need to know, especially when you start in your journey. I would like to find, that's how I found my way. Mm -hmm. Help me mm -hmm. to find the truth. I need to find out. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you have. I, I guess the word would be having a strong faith and believing and helping and hoping and asking and praying and so forth and so on, that you will get those answers and that protection. Right? The moment you pray, you're sending out vibrations which are extremely unattractive to any lost soul, uh, any uh, de right. demonic soul, at least negative soul. That protects you totally. The biggest protection is really the prayer, the real right. communication with light, mm -hmm. and then the blessing as well, and really feeling yourself being sort of supported by your guardian spirits. Mm -hmm. and, and that is sort of, I think, the best thing. Feel yourself enveloped by the, wing, of the wings of the guardian spirit. It was so when you're praying, you're, sort of, you're asking God to, or Jesus it to... It doesn't matter what you ask, just a, this, the simple effect of praying as such gives your whole aura a different energy okay. and closes the aura. And all the holes which are there before suddenly close because you are sending out this amazing energy out of yourself. You become the prayer. And then they can't get through. And then they can't go. Then they, that keeps them away. We have to give our contact information. We didn't have time for the second time, video. And there's huh? probably more we could talk about this, but it <laughs> is that time already. And for more information about this show, you can contact me. And you have my phone number there and my email address and my website. And Dina has her email address on there. And look for us on Facebook. I write many things like this on there, and you can get a lot of information. We'll let you know on Facebook when, uh, on Facebook, I'll post it okay. when I get the YouTube page up and running and the Twitter page up and running. I'll post it on Facebook. We have about uh, 80 seconds left, so we'll talk about Hans' information. Get in touch with Hans Wilhelm. It's at www.lifeexplained.com. This is the series that we are doing here, and his phone number is 203-222-9341, his email Hans at HansWilhelm.com. And you also have a, a website, HansWilhelm.com, right? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, he also has that, www.HansWilhelm.com. and everything. Right? Has his books and everything on there also. Um, okay. So, okay, we have about 30 seconds left. We gave the information. Party! <laughs> <laughs> Pay for a party! You know what I think might be a good, a good DVD to do? How to pray. I get that a lot of things. How to pray. 
Do we do this repetition prayer that we hear all the time in all the religions and everything? Blah, 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 yeah. Or how do how can people really pray? It's on my to-do like list. That. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think that that would be a good one. I think the next one is meditate. How to meditate? I need to do that. Yeah. How to meditate is another one. Uh, That's meditate. good because I think that will help a lot, especially with yeah. what we talked about it tonight. Can't quiet the brain. Quiet the mind. Get into that place with your angels. That will help with what we're talking about tonight, mm. also. Right. When we have the time. Okay, folks. That's it. Have a wonderful week. Good night. Always Thank weeks. you.